Are you happy to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Okay, I feel that. I believe you. Would you stand to your feet, please? If you have a praise book in front of you, find song number 25. But you may not need the words. We sing this here often. This song is called, We Have Come Into His House. Sing it with me, church. We have come into his house, gathered in his name to worship him. We have come into his house, gathered in Worship him, worship him, Christ the Lord. So forget about yourself. So forget about yourself. Concentrate on him and worship him. So forget about yourself. Concentrate on him. Worship him, worship him, Christ the Lord. Let us lift up holy hands. Let us lift up holy hands and magnify his name and worship him. Let us lift up holy hands. Worship him, worship him, Christ the Lord. We have come into his house. We have come into his house, gathered in his name to worship him. If you still have the praise book, close it up and set it down. I want you to take your hands like this, warm them up a little bit. Okay. Now go take one of those hands and put it in someone else's hand and shake it up and down. We're going to sing a song called This Is the Day. You know this song. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. I will rejoice, I will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day. 
what did he do, church? from the book of Psalms, as a lot of your praise songs do. Sing it with me if you know it. It's called Better Is One Day.
Thank you, church. I appreciate you singing with me. You may be seated. That is one day, amen. Looking forward to that day, amen. Thanks, Lord. Good morning, church. So good to see everyone here this morning. Uh, winding down the last part of April, amen. All the birds are singing. It's been beautiful. They were singing this morning. They were morning. singing this morning. So beautiful. Rise creation. Uh, shout out to Leela McDowell. Her birthday is today. Yeah. Woo! Yeah. And uh, Brother John uh, Catlin, his birthday is today in heaven with us today. Amen. Yeah. Amen. And uh, Alex, enjoy Jarena's birthday. Uh, excuse me. Anniversary is today. The wedding anniversary. Yeah. <laughs> I had a distraction. Huh? So congratulations. Awesome. And um, just keep in prayer, uh, Nick and Kathy Marika, please, and Johnny, uh, John and, J and Judy Simmons, uh, Dr. Marie Payne, um, Dr. Ray, uh, Roddy Freeman's daughter, Lawanda Freeman, she's been visiting us, her, with us here before, awesome singer, pray for her, she's in the hospital, and uh, Brother Jay and Elizabeth um, Roberts, are part of our missions team here as well, pray for Jay and pray for his dad. And I uh, appreciate that very much. But I'm uh, looking forward to what God has for us in the service today. Amen? Amen. Lots going on. It's wonderful. So I praise the Lord. Um, at this time, I ask uh, um, for tithes and offerings. If I did, could come forward, please? Also keep Brother Isaac in your prayers. Yes, brother, keep Brother Isaac in your prayers. Amen. Um, also, uh, Mike Duff in your prayers as well. Thank you. Yeah, that was incredible what happened with Isaac. And I approve both people being okay. Got your microphone. Just the people in here. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we uh, pray for your blessing upon this assembly today, Holy Christ. And uh, and the ones that couldn't be here, we hope and pray that you'll bless them as well, Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, there's some unusual things going on in our country, Lord Jesus Christ. And we pray that... Uh, we would be, uh, we would lean upon you, and that we would uh, bow before you at the foot of your cross, Lord Jesus Christ, and that we would get things right according to your scriptures. And we pray that we will hear your Holy Spirit this day, in Jesus' name, and, and bless this offering, O oh Lord. In your perfect name, we pray, Holy Christ. Amen. Amen. Please bring your tithes and offerings. You are Lord of creation. We lift this offering up to you today, Lord. We pray that your hands are blessed us, God. It's been given in faith, Lord, and we give it to you in faith. We ask this in all in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Well, this time, uh, we just have a round robin, but today, bless um, when our medical missions team took off down to War, West Virginia, and Yukon, if I believe, West Virginia this past week, a few days, and they had to cancel one day because it was snowing. Amazing, but you don't want to be on a country road. I'm familiar. Yeah, no. Nah. West Virginia, Kentucky, <laughs> parts of Virginia. When it's snowing, you're unfamiliar. So I praise the Lord for the folks down there asking us to come be a part of what they're doing. And I'm going to ask Yvonne Beverly, if you come on up, just tell us a little bit about it if you could. I'd appreciate it. And um, her and Ann Greg, I'll give them a hand. They had gone down. Come on up. Just a little bit. Because I've been hearing what all they've been doing, and it's awesome. And we appreciate uh Dr. Bennett and them having them down there and us being a part of that as well. Come on, ladies. Oh, okay. Here we, <laughs> we learned a lot about each other, so we now did. We, we're sworn to secrecy. <laughs> <laughs> you know what goes on in the car stays in the car. So. <laughs> um, good morning, everyone. And we came back from war yesterday, and it was a, an eventful trip. I won't go into the bad things, um, <laughs> but we are now committed. 
I am at least. Um, I as well. To, to going once a month to war for one day. I'll be working in the Bradshaw Clinic and the Yukon Clinic, and I'm gonna be teaching diabetic teaching to the people there. Um, if anybody has empty insulin bottles, the, the glass ones, I need them because I need them for teaching. So if you have any, I know everybody has the pens anymore, but if you have any of the empty bottles, please give them to me so that I can use them for teaching to people because I'm pretty sure that they're not going to have pens down there. It's that poor. The poverty rate is 44%, which the national average is 13%. So that gives you a little idea of, of how bad it is down there. Um, the first night I didn't sleep because I kept hearing <laughs> all night long. And I asked Nancy, the pastor down there the next day, I said, what is this in the church? They're mining underneath the church. Yeah. And that's what I was hearing. I can't hear you talk, but I can hear a miner 100 miles <laughs> below the ground yes. this. Underneath her, she can hear the money. <laughs> <laughs> we, we didn't have a shower for three days because there's no hot water, there's no showers. Uh, you can't use the water that's in the tap because it's contaminated with E. coli because the sewers drain directly into the War River, yep. which is their water source. Yep. So we drove with the car windows down on the way home. <laughs> <laughs> and the heated seat. She has heated seats. So it's wonderful. She was happy as a hog in mud. <laughs> I'm the cold one. <laughs> but anyway, um, any way, any materials that you have that are diabetic that you're not using that you want to donate, please see me. I, I really need them. Um, it's a huge community down there that's diabetic, and I look forward to serving them. Thank you. And they, they are, I just want to say they're wonderful people. Yeah. They are very, very suspicious of outsiders. Uh, Nancy and her husband have been there for nine to 11, 11 years, years. 11 years. And they are just beginning to get their feet in the door and make friends with these people. Um, we were down there and rode around. Nancy and her husband were nice enough to drive us around. Um, it's kind of like a, if you think of a Christmas tree, this mountain this communities are kind of like a Christmas tree with lights on it. And all these little communities are the light bulbs. Yeah. Um, and that's what you see, and there the poverty is unbelievable. You'll see a house that is burnt, not to the ground, but burned, and then next door to it, you'll see a piece of a house that you think is going to fall in, and somebody's actually living in it. Um, but you don't see children uh, out in the yard. You don't see playthings out in the yard. They don't allow that. Um, the first through the eighth grade actually go to school in Yukon. Um, but all the high school kids go over the mountain to school. So they and ride Welsh. in a bus yes. to Welsh, which is the county capital of McDowell County. And that's where they're shipped off to go to school. And they ride a bus on this road that is yeah. unreal. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, don't, don't close your eyes yeah. or you feel like you're in a roller, roller coaster. Yeah. It's, it's that bad. Uh, we did enjoy visiting with them. They took us to Welsh on a day trip. We had a great time. They showed us the best hospitality, good food, great company, great worship. Yeah, um, it was wonderful. But just don't, you know, first thing out of Nancy's mouth is don't drink the water. Um, so, you know, it's, it's really poverty stricken, but their need is great. And um, Yvonne and I felt wonderful to be a part of their their community for a few days and to feel welcome and they made us feel very, very welcomed. So, thank you. All right. Thank you, ladies. And please keep us updated as y'all keep going back and if there's anything further the church can do to help. Um, Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like you to please put your hands together. You're in for a treat. We have Reverend Nikki Blanton who's going to share right. a few songs for us. Y'all know I like to introduce a song with scripture, and I couldn't find it, but uh, the scripture says judge righteous judgment, and that's how I'm going to introduce this song. Judge righteous judgment. That's what 
God's word says. There's a lot of people talking about people, looking down on everybody, acting like they're sitting on a steeple, keeping all their own faults, locked up in a big vault, forgetting that God don't need a combination to see it all. Raise your hands if you ain't never done nothing wrong. That's what I thought. Rocks are heavy, and they hurt people you love. And it's so easy, reaching down and picking them up. But I ain't gonna throw no stones at nobody. Don't wanna get hit. ground beside her. She was caught red-handed and man, they all couldn't wait to stone her. Now I'm just paraphrasing, but Jesus said, wait a minute. Step right up and be the first to throw if you ain't done some sin. One by one, they all dropped their skull went home. Sorry about that, everybody. Y'all are awake now, right? <laughs> I said, sorry about that, everybody. Y'all awake now, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, somebody requested this song, and I'm, I'm glad they did. It's been a while since I've done it. It's called God is Faithful. You know the chorus of that song, Caitlin? You want to come help me? Help me with the... Oh, okay, she's feeding the baby. Excuses, excuses. <laughs> All right, then. I guess I'll try to do it. How about the choir? The choir want to help me on that? The choir? Come on up. You, you, any of you choir members, the, the, the God is faithful. I know some of you know it. Please, please, the more the more. Many voices always sound better than one. And if you don't know it, it's really simple. Yeah, it's real simple. Yes, yeah. If you don't know it, just, just, uh, just, just stand there. And I'm going to introduce this song like this. Mary, Mary Smith, Jeff and Mary Smith, uh, this was her favorite uh, scripture. Um, faithful is he that calleth you, or one of her favorite scriptures. Uh, faithful is he that calleth you who also will do it. 1 Thessalonians 5, 24. Amen. He is faithful. Yes, he is. Rain check. Here we go. Faithful 
God is faithful, I know he is, I know he is. to perform, perform his Y'all get off the ground. I believe I about got off the ground. <laughs> Thanks, lady. I appreciate that. It sounded so. Before you leave, you got for one or two. Are you it's back? early. Do you think you have one or two? Can we do a couple more? Yeah. I'd love to hear you sing anyway, bro. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do shackles. Yeah, shoot. All right. <laughs> See if I can remember it, y'all. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Amen. Amen. I'm watching you. Hey, this, there's no seatbelts in solid rock. That's one of our mottos. <coughs> I, yeah, I've been doing it a while. That's the truth. My dad used to let me off. He used to go dance before, way before I learned to sing. And get my boogie on in a minute. We won't, we'll leave it at that. <laughs> God forgive you. I don't mind, though. Just glad to be Yes, amen. You know what I'm saying? Uh, shackles off my feet so I can dance. Go ahead. I just want to praise you. What you want to do? I just want to praise you. You broke the chains, now I can lift my hand. Jesus. And I'm going to praise you. Lord, I'm going to praise you. In the corners of my mind. I just can't seem to find a reason to believe I've been set free. 
Cause you see, been bound for so long, till all hope is gone. But if I lift my hands, I understand. I can praise you through my circumstance. Get the shackles off my feet so I can dance. I just wanna praise you. What I just wanna praise you. You broke the chains now I can lift my hands. Jesus, and I'm gonna praise you. What I wanna praise you. It went wrong, all went wrong at this one time. So much pressure fell on me. I thought I was gonna lose my That's mind. It. But I know you wanna see if I will hold on through these trials. But I need you, you to lift, lift this love, cause I can't take it no more. more. kind of way, but God has broken every chain, so let, let me go, go right, right now. now, take the shackles off my feet so I can dance, Jesus, I just want to praise you, Lord, I want to praise you, you broke the chains, now I can lift my hand, Jesus, and I'm going to praise you, Lord, I want to praise you, praise him this morning, church, take the shackles off my feet so I can dance, Jesus. Lord, I want to praise you. You broke the chains, now I can lift my hands. Lord, I'm going to praise you. Lord, I'm going to praise you. Take the shackles off my feet so I can dance. Jesus, I'm going to praise you. Lord, I'm going to praise you. You broke the chains, now I can lift my hands. Lord, I'm going to praise you. Lord, I'm going to praise you. All right. Yeah. smiles on people's faces amen. amen looks good on you even when it's a rough time amen, amen. but God in it he's in you amen. amen our scripture reading this morning if you would stand please it's really short I'll give you a minute to stand y'all forgive me I gotta catch my breath I had too much cheese and crackers yesterday <laughs> and they were good but anyway God bless I know some old folks had some good cheese and crackers and I want that or you got them okay amen <laughs> the Lord is good 1 Peter 1, verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a living hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Amen. He lives. Yes. Make it this morning. He lives. Say it with me. He lives. Yes. Amen. Praise the Lord and bless us with his word today. And I'm going to turn it over to... Well, this is another one of those strange moments in my ministry, but it looks like I have them almost every week. <laughs> Friday night, I was dreaming that I was walking up to the pulpit here, and I had this particular Bible in my hand, and a voice just as clear as a bell said, you will preach on 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And I said, why? And it answered because it talks about my resurrection. And I said, all right. So I, last night I turned to it to make sure that's what I was doing. And it was. And so here it comes this morning, folks, however the Lord wants to deliver it. 1 Corinthians 15, I will start off by saying that the church that was located at Corinth 
was a very troubled church. As a matter of fact, they had so many problems that Paul had to write 2 Corinthians as well. That's true. They had lots of questions. They had been inundated with people coming in the church that were practicing heresies, questioning the gospel, and practicing sexual immorality. There was a temple in the city that was run by bald-headed prostitutes. They shaved their heads to let people know they were prostitutes, and that was part of their worship service in that pagan temple. That is why you see a lot of verses in the book of Corinthians that you do not perhaps understand why he said what he said about some of them, and he was addressing the problems that were there. And a lot of them had come over into the Christian church unconverted and were trying to push their theology on the people in the new church at Corinth. So you will see a lot of that as you read. And so Paul felt it necessary to start off with the first few verses explaining the gospel to the church at Corinth in this letter again. And I think it's always prudent and pertinent for us to do the same thing from time to time in our own church is to read what the gospel is and then he answers a question that has been popping up in the church at Corinth and we'll look at that in just a moment. He said, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also you have received and wherein you stand. That's important these days that we make that stand on the gospel. By, the, by which also you are saved, if you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. The Old Testament scriptures explained exactly how Christ would die, and we saw it fulfilled in the New Testament. And then he said this. He died for our sins, number one. Number four, verse four, and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. And he was seen of Cephas, then of the twelve. After that he was seen of above 500 brethren at once, of whom the greater part remain unto this present, but some have died. And after that he was seen of James, then of all the apostles. And last of all, he was seen of me also as one born out of due time. He appeared to the apostle Paul, and to be one of the original apostles, you had to have seen the resurrected Christ. Paul was the last of the original apostles. The position of apostle is a different thing, but to be one of the original or whatever, you had to have seen the resurrection, resurrected Christ, and he did. And Paul said, I was one that was born out of due time. And then he says this to let people understand, for I am the least of the apostles, and, I am not, and, and that I am not even suitable to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. Paul struggled with his past until the day he died. Not that it was a bad thing, but it kept him humble and reminded him of what he came from. And that's something that maybe we ought to do once in a while before we get tempted to be high and mighty and look down their nose at somebody else. And then here was the good part of it. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. The reason that you are saved this morning and on your way to heaven is because of nothing but the grace of God. There isn't a thing anybody in here can do to earn it or hang on to it or do whatever. It's all got to be done by the grace of God. 
And he gives you the ability to do what you do. And he said, and his grace which was bestowed upon me was not in vain. And he said, but I labored more abundantly than they all, yet not I, but the grace of God which was with me. Therefore, whether it were I or they, so we preached and so you believed. And now here's the, the question. And believe it or not, even in today's churches throughout America and of the world, really, there is an argument, there is a question, and there is doubt. And he says this, Now if Christ be preached that he rose from the dead, how say some among you that there is no resurrection of the dead? What some people say, and they believe even today, and they're not true Christians, a true Christian could never say that there is no resurrection of the dead. They can't do that. You cannot speak by the Holy Spirit of God and speak a blasphemy or a heresy. You cannot do that. If you stand there and say there is no resurrection of the dead, you simply are lost. You need to understand that part right there. All right. Now, but if there be no resurrection of the dead, then is Christ not risen? So that makes the gospel a lie. The whole premise of eternal life that we look for in the scriptures that God promised us all hinged on the fact that Jesus rose from the dead. There was a group of of infidels and idiots out years ago that said Jesus never really died on the cross that he swooned please and that the cool air of the tomb revived him oh yeah all of the skin was beaten off of his torso front and back with a whip to where you could see his rib cage then he was beaten and beaten some more and beaten some more. He had two-inch thorns jammed in the top of his head. He had nails in his hands and nails in his feet. And then they jammed a spear all the way into his heart. And it said water and blood came out. And he just swooned. You know, the quality of the ignorance is increasing. you got to give it that. <laughs> You got to give it that, and they said that he came back to he he revived later in the tomb. Well, a man in that condition, weakened if he did, could not have rolled that big stone away that took six men to put in place. So it just gets dumber by the minute, and I do not need to continue on with that. But there are some people that do not believe that he resurrected from the dead and Paul said if there is no resurrection then is Christ not risen and if he did not rise from the dead this is all in vain this whole idea of salvation this whole idea of eternal life this whole idea of heaven it's all in vain people it's all in vain and if Christ be not risen then is our preaching vain, and your faith is also vain. I was talking to a brother before church today about the calling for ministry. And I told him, I said, it will consume your life. You will not be able to think of much else but ministry. Be you man or woman, if God puts that calling in you, you will not rest until you do what he tells you to do. I remember going into the ministry 26 years ago full time. Now, I've been in the ministry about 36, but I went full time. I made a huge step. I, I, I gave away a good job. It had benefits. It had a future but that was not what God wanted me to do. I had a lot of really great jobs that I could never feel right doing any longer. 
I sacrificed an awful lot to be doing what I'm doing. And I'm not going to go into a whole lot of details, but I did. It cost me dearly to do what I'm doing. And to think for one minute that what I'm doing is in vain, that is probably about the most devastating thing I can think of because I have put my entire life and my family's life into this ministry, into the calling that God has given me that I know he gave me. There is no, de- let, me say, let me say something. If you want to know whether or not you're called, run from God and see what happens. <laughs> Try that. And he'll yank you back, hook, line, sinker, boat, motor, anchor, and everything. Kicking and screaming, buddy. And so I know it's real. I have studied this Bible every day since I was 12 years old, and I know it's real. I studied apologetics. I studied homiletics. I studied hysterics. (laughs) And I can tell you one thing. Jesus loves me. This I know, for the Bible tells me so. That's what I learned. But there are some people that said he didn't rise from the dead. And he said our preaching is in vain and our faith is in vain. You've got your faith in a dead man over somewhere in the Middle East if in fact Christ did not rise. And he said, yes, we are found false witnesses of God because we have testified of God that he raised up Christ whom he raised not up if it so be that the dead rise not. I'm the biggest liar in the building if in fact Christ did not rise. I have spent the last 20 some years of my life telling people that he did over and over and over again staking my reputation, my name and even the name of God on the fact that he rose from the dead and if he did not rise from the dead I have been lying to you and you have all been believing a lie that's what Paul said then he said if the dead rise not then is not Christ raised and if Christ be not raised your faith is in vain and you are yet in your sins there are many people I can walk up and down the aisles and talk to, and you can tell me the date and time that you got your sins forgiven. Most of you are saved, and it may have been a while back, but you can all testify that you know beyond a shadow of a doubt that your sins were forgiven on a certain date when you accepted Christ as your Savior. But if Jesus did not rise from the dead you were still nothing but a dirty old sinner on your way to hell there is no you have not been forgiven and you have fooled yourself if Jesus did not rise everything we are and everything we believe hinges on the fact that he rose from the dead it wasn't enough for him to walk on this earth living a sinless, perfect life. And it was not enough for him to die on a cross because of the sins that we committed, but it was all contingent on the fact that he rose from the dead, period. That's the most important thing. And he said when he... uh, When he talked to the disciples, he said, because I live, you will live also. Now, this is another tough one. Then they which are fallen asleep in Christ are perished. I don't know how many funerals I have done in my ministry. Scores and scores and scores of them. Some of the people I did not know very well and some of the people I did and loved very dearly. I have provided comfort for hundreds of people when I sat down with them and I said, your loved one is with the Lord because I know they were saved. I talked to them and you will see them again. 
But if Christ is not risen, you will not see them again. They won't see you. They're just dead. And what an awful thought to have. We are created to somewhere in our soul believe in an eternity. Whether you admit it or not, somewhere in your soul is a belief that there is an eternity and there is an afterlife. But if Christ did not rise, there, there, is, there is no afterlife. I would, I've said this many, many times, but I don't mind saying it again. The toughest day of my ministry was preaching my mother's funeral. She always wanted the last word whenever we got into a discussion. And so, and she usually won the argument. She was a highly intelligent woman. And she said, son, I want you to preach my funeral. She knew she was dying. And I said, mama, why in the world would you want me to preach your funeral? Don't you know what that, how hard that's going to be? She said, yeah, but you're the only one that really knows me that well, and you're going to do it. And I said, all right. And it was really, really tough. That's your mother, you know. I mean, my goodness. Really, really tough. Hardest thing I ever did. But the one thing that kept me going is I know my mother is saved. There is no doubt in my mind that she's saved. She's the one that led me to the Lord in 1969. And she lived the word of God in front of her children and grandchildren one of the greatest ladies in the world. But if there is no resurrection from the dead, that was the last time I ever saw her was in the, the coffin. As an aside to that, the night before the funeral, we went to view my mom. And believe it or not, she looked like 25 years younger laying there in that casket. I asked the funeral director, I said, how'd y'all do that? And he said, it's a guy named Tony in the back that can do that. I said, where is he? They took me back there. And I said, can you hook me up? He said, yeah, but you gotta die before I can do any of that. So, do I look forward to eternity? Yeah, you better believe it. I can get my youth back too. But if there is no resurrection from the dead, all of our loved ones are gone and we'll never see them again. And that is the most awful prospect of all that we have looked at. Amarissa's back there shaking her head. No, 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 no. I think she gets it. And then Paul really lays it on us. And he said, if in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. Think about what you have done to serve the Lord. How you have kept yourself or tried to keep yourself from the rudiments of this world as best you could. How many of you have even lost family and friends over the cause of Christ by making your stand. How many of you have sacrificed this and sacrificed that so that you may live for the Lord? And then only to find out there's nothing after this life? That's it? You're done? That's why Paul said we're of most men most miserable because in the Roman Empire, when all of this was going on, when, when they discovered that Christianity was not just a part of Judaism, the emperor outlawed it and they began killing Christians on the street when they found out they were Christians. They would walk up to them and the question a Roman soldier would ask is, are you one of them? That's all he would say. And you either had to deny Christ or confess him and if you said, I am, they killed you right then and there. I want you to think about the people over in communist China. The underground church is the largest church in the world. There are thousands of them and they have to hide to worship and if they are ever caught, 
the, the Chinese communists take the pastor out and beat him to death in front of the congregation. Now, I will admit, you'd be hard-pressed to get away with that in here. But nonetheless, that's the fear they live in. Every single day, the only visible churches are state-run churches that are told what they can say and what they can't say, kind of like what Governor Northam tries to do right now. Well, we're not a state-registered church. I can promise you that. But think about it. What they have to suffer in communist nations for the cause of Christ. And what if they were to suddenly discover that it was for nothing? Wouldn't that be really, really awful? All of the things, the charities and all of the colleges founded by Christians to train Christians would all have been for nothing. But Paul makes a statement here after he's got us really... Mm, got us down here. He said, but now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Because he lives, we can live also he proved it over and over and over in front of hundreds of people that he was alive and just when they thought he might be a ghost he asked them do you have anything to eat and they had some fish and a honeycomb and he sat down and ate it in front of them and then there was that last disciple by the name of Thomas that wasn't there that night. And he said, I will not believe until I can put my fingers in the nail prints of his hands and thrust my hand into the hole in his side. The next night he appeared there in front of his people again and he said, Thomas, he said, come here. And he said, put your fingers in the prints of my hand and Put your hand in my side and, and, and don't be unbelieving. And Thomas didn't know what else to say but my Lord and my God. Then Jesus looked at him and said, Thomas, because you have seen me, you have believed. And then for the rest of us, he said, blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Let me say this to you. Of all the years I have spent in ministry, I stake my life and the life of my family on the fact that Jesus did, in fact, rise from the dead. And that he's waiting for us, and one day he's going to come and get us and take us home to be with him. All the years I have served the Lord, I have watched him answer prayers. I have watched him heal the impossible I have watched him sustain me and my family. And no matter what I have done, he has never, ever let me down. And you can rest assured, he is very much alive. He said, I've got the keys of death and of hell. And he said, I was dead once, but I am alive forevermore. I'm the beginning and the end, the first and the last the Alpha and Omega people, he is alive and we need to start acting like he is. I've watched drunks and drug addicts change their life and never look back because of the fact that he is alive. I have watched the worst of the worst make a complete turnaround in their life that no program, that no other forms of counseling or anything could ever do. I've watched a miraculous change because of the fact that he is alive. I've seen people healed from the most impossible diseases because of the fact that he is alive. This is not a fairy tale, beloved. This is real. It's as real as it gets. And we need to never, ever fear anything 
because of the fact that he is alive. Don't ever be ashamed of your faith. Don't be afraid to stand up against all odds and share that because the one that rose from the dead is going to come back and snatch you up off of this earth one of these days. And I don't want to stand before him where I've denied him or where I've doubted him or what. I want to make a stand for him while I am here. Amen. Folks, he is alive. He is very much alive. And if you, if you don't know whether or not he is, you've never experienced that, talk to him. He's still alive. He'll, he'll answer you. He'll answer your prayers. He'll reveal himself to you. Don't ever worry. He is alive. Shall we stand? I want you to understand this is what it's all about, the fact that he rose from the dead. He has power over death. He has power over life. And he wants you to trust him today. There may be somebody here that you've heard what was said and you've never actually trusted him as your savior. If that is true, I'm going to ask you to come and take one of these folks by the hand and let them pray with you. So you can walk out of here knowing for a fact that you're saved. Maybe you are saved, but the devil has been attacking you with doubt and fear and everything he can throw at you. And let me tell you, you're not alone. You're, about everybody in here has had that. And you need some strength and you come and pray. Maybe you need someone to pray with you over another matter. It doesn't make any difference what it is. This altar is always open for you no matter who.